Have you ever wondered what the most daring raid of the D-Day invasion of Normandy was? Well, arguably, it's a raid like no other, where only 150 men of the planned 500 paratroopers would assault a heavily defended fortress position with artillery that could provide devastating fire onto the D-Day beaches. Fail to achieve their mission, and the landings on Sword and Juno beaches would falter. This is the Merville Battery Raid by the 9th Battalion of the British Parachute Regiment. We'd gone in with 150, we came out with 75 on our feet only. Adjust fire, system aided over. Raptor, this is still rain, adjust fire, system aided out. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Normandy. These beautiful views mask the brutality experienced on these beaches almost 80 years ago. Right, welcome to Merville Gun Battery. Now, if I had written this as a script or a screenplay for Hollywood, it would be thrown out because it's completely unbelievable. Let me just read a passage of this. 540 men were ordered to parachute or land via glider behind enemy lines in occupied Normandy. They were to assault a German fortress position manned by 130 men, surrounded by minefields, barbed wire, manned by heavy support weapons, multiple machine guns, mortars, and four artillery positions. These artillery pieces could fire onto Sword Beach and they would cause havoc for the Allies who were landing on those beaches. If the guns were not destroyed, many British would be injured or killed on those beaches. Their task was to silence four of these guns by 0530 in the morning. If they hadn't silenced the guns by then, HMS Arafusa would start to shell this position, whether they were here or not. Oh, and by the way, few of your gliders have landed, all of your men have been dropped all over the place, and of those 540 men that you should have had, you actually only have 150 men to conduct your mission. So what do you do? And the commander for this operation was Lieutenant Colonel Terence Otway, and he decided he was gonna attack this position anyway. In 1941, Hitler had control of France and he set about creating the Atlantic Wall, a series of coastal defences from the Spanish border in the south all the way to the frozen Scandinavian north. As part of this Normandy series, we will focus on the activity here. The highlighted area in yellow signifies the strong defensive positions both east and west of the Orne River estuary near the town of Wistrom but specifically, we are going to look at the Merville Battery. This strong point was designed to fire west along Sword Beach and onto Juno Beach. It was believed at the time that there were four 150 mm guns at this position. They had to be destroyed. This fortress was manned by 130 Germans with 360 degree defenses, including barbed wire, minefields, machine gun nests, and heavy weapon systems. This is the eastern flank of the Allied invasion, and for reference, in this location is the Orne Canal Bridge, site of another famous D-Day raid. Our story starts with a drop zone just east of here called Drop Zone V, where hundreds of paras and gliders would land. However, the Germans had flooded this area and the paras were dispersed further to the east, resulting in many of the men becoming lost, separated, and indeed, some of them even drowned in the flooded fields. We're now going to look at this area in detail. And here we can see the flooded area, drop zone V. And here you can see the direction of the original drop zone, which is southeast of this location. The Merville battery lay to the west, some three kilometers away from the drop zone. After finding their way through the drop zone and through the flooded fields, the paras would make their way to the first RV. So we've made our way from drop zone V, which is where many of the men landed, although obviously lots of them were dispersed and separated, as we've mentioned. Um, we're now heading now to the rendezvous location. So this is where Otway and his men were to RV before moving off towards the battery. It's not the easiest sign to read, so I'll, uh, I'll read it, which is from this crossroads on the night of the 5th and 6th of June, 1944, 
The 9th Battalion of the British Parachute Regiment reduced to 150 men and deprived of most of its weapons and equipment, but united behind its commanding officer, Lieutenant Colonel Otway, departed to assault and capture the Merville Battery. So if they were anticipating 500 or so men arriving right here, then they would have been lining these ditches. They would have been taking cover while they waited for more people to arrive in locations just like this. You can well imagine the paras taking cover while they waited to see how many more of their men would arrive before realizing that there was actually only 150 of them. So they would have been spread out in locations just like this. They would have had roadblocks up ahead. They would have had a screen out at the end of each of these roads and they would have been taking cover just here. I was absolutely shattered. A hundred all ranks out of 700 that we'd taken off with. And uh, we were due to move off according to orders at two, two in the morning. But I, I hadn't told anybody, but I'd kept a uh, reserve of 15 minutes up my sleeve, so to speak. So I waited those 15 minutes and another 50 men came in and that was it. That was all I had, 150 all ranks. And I had 20 Bangalore torpedoes out of 60, one radio set which didn't work. Um, and I later discovered I had no mine detectors, no tapes, uh, in, and I had one Vickers machine gun out of six. I had no mortars. In fact, I had really damn all except the good men. Otway then led his men to this crossroads. Remember, he was under time pressure to silence the guns. All right, so Otway led his 150 men from down in that direction, the crossroads where they rendezvoused is just down there, up this road, and then they swung right towards the Merville Battery. And the Merville Battery is just up this road. They then reached their attacking positions at another crossroads located just here. So the advance party and the assaulting force made their way up this road. That's the junction down there where we've just come from. So they ran up this road and the advance party came across a machine gun position right here on the corner of this road where this, uh, what we call a zebra crossing in the UK, is located right here. Bit of a build-up position, mainly just things like sandbags, and it was dug in slightly. Machine gun was located right here. And that was very quickly silenced by the advance party. Machine gun knocked out of action, occupants killed. And then Colonel Otway had to devise his plan. They'd rehearsed for a long, long time of how they were going to assault this position. And his plan included a diversionary attack down this track and this track leads straight to the front end of the battery and they were to make as much noise as they possibly could um, charging screaming firing from the hip as they ran down this position towards the front end of the Merville battery Otway himself would lead the assaulting sections down the bottom of the road there through what then was a small wood block the wood block is now gone but you can see the hedgerow there and they would have attacked through that position into the battery. And unfortunately, they had to cross a minefield as they did that. But we're gonna go now and look inside the battery. We're gonna see where this diversionary attack took place, and then we'll see where the main assault came from as well. The diversionary force followed this track to the north of the position, while the assaulting force approached further to the south, going through a wood block. now here inside the Merville battery location and the first thing to point out is where the diversionary attack came from so we've looked at the area by the zebra crossing outside of the battery and the diversionary attack came in and around this location they would have been coming in firing from the hip screaming shouting making as much noise as they possibly can to basically get the attention of the German defenders
I'm just going to read this inscription to you. This museum is rare. It is situated in a battlefield. The remains of British and German soldiers still lie here from June 1944. Please keep that thought in mind and tread respectfully as you walk over this hollow ground. The Melville Battery is a battle honour of the Parachute Regiment. Quite a sobering thought, really. There's not many, I can't think of any other location where there's actually a cross of sacrifice within one of these locations. That's really poignant because as it says, it is a battlefield that contains the remains of British and German soldiers. And therefore we must be as respectful as we possibly can. So we're gonna take a look at one of the concrete emplacements one of the casemates just so we can see what they actually look like and what their construction was like. So these are the rear doors. This was to allow for ventilation, to allow the smoke and fumes to come out from the guns when they arrive. They didn't actually have the big guns here. The big guns weren't delivered. And as a result, they only had 100 millimeter guns, exactly the same as those from World War One. But they still needed that ventilation. So lots and lots of ventilation shafts. You can see all over these, they've got ventilation shafts on the ceiling and also on the sides and a great big door at the back. As we walk around the position, you can see that there's earth piled up on the sides to add additional protection. Six foot reinforced concrete. And then we've got these flanking arms to also protect the position. At the front here is where the gun would have protruded from. This is called the embrasure. I gave the order to go in. I shouted, in fact, get in, get in. And they went in, uh, yelling their heads off. I was shouting bastards, 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 and zigzagging down. And the ground was uneven, which might save your life. On my left, I momentarily heard shouts of mines, 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 and explosions. The first men to go in that hit the apron fence, which is a barbed wire fence made like that, fell down on their face on top of it, and the others used them as a bridge going over, and then these, they got up and followed them. And the assault itself was only, you know, it was an infantry assault. They didn't have the heavy support weapons. They had the small arms. Uh, grenades obviously and so any scarring or damage to this embrasure would have been caused by bombing or naval gunfire support you can see it's taken a bit of a battering compared to the other one and so we're now going to look from the viewing platform just to give you a view of what the gun position looked like and how actually how big the site is and remember as well that the site would have extended to a barbed wire perimeter with minefields, especially in the direction that Colonel Otway's team was assaulting from. Let's take a look up here. Just to give you an idea as to the scale of the location. So casemate number one, I'm still on casemate number two. Casemate number three over there. Casemate number four. And then behind that hangar is where Colonel Otway's assaulting team came from. So they assaulted through a woodblock, through a minefield, and then charged this position. But only after the diversionary attack, which came in behind that casemate over there, drew the attention of the German defenders. The diversionary attack was really loud, firing from the hip, screaming, trying to get the Germans to basically buy the deception plan. Here we have the air raid siren right on cue. This is one of the original open gun 
positions before they built those reinforced concrete casemates. So the gun would have been elevated on this platform. Of course, they needed more protection from the Allied bombing, and so they built these big casemates that you can see just over there. And just like today, where the embrasures are open, the Germans actually left them open for ventilation, which meant that the attack was much more successful. Had they sealed up all of the embrasures and the doors, they probably could have held out and the attack may not have been as successful. Okay, we're now gonna head through this reconstructed trench system, which will allow us to get to the next casemate. We have another one of those open gun emplacements. And this one actually has some engravings on it. So let's go and take a look. So YouTube may well try and ban this video for that symbol in here, but um, this is one of the open gun positions you see at many of the older sites. So now these are, are just like the open positions you see at places like Point du Hoc, for example. And they were made redundant, of course, when the larger casemates were built. But just check out the markings and the engravings that were marked in the wet concrete here when this place was constructed. And this inscription reads, Germany must live even if we die. We're now going to make our way to the accommodation block and this accommodation block is special because it's got a tabrook on top and it's this tabrook which would have covered the route that Otway's assault team took so the person who was in this tabrook was responsible for many of the Allies deaths. The interesting thing about this casemate construction is you can see the horizontal lines on there and that indicates that the wooden panels were used for shuttering just as you would pour any sort of reinforced concrete. Um, wooden panels were used to keep the concrete in of course to form the shape. Now as the war progressed and resources became scarce there was less wooden paneling to be able to use for the shuttering so they actually started to use block construction. So if you see bunkers and casemates which are block construction you can tell that they are newer and if they've got this horizontal shuttering lines, you can tell that they are the older structures. And just to reinforce that fact, you can actually see the markings from the wood there, where you can see the grain, which was formed from the shuttering into the concrete itself. Pretty astounding. Right, we're gonna head up into a Tobruk, which was used to defend this position. And you can see from that view that it covered the woods from where the assault force came from. So whoever was in this defensive position is probably accountable for many of the wounded and those who were killed assaulting this position. This is a direction that the um, Allies would have assaulted from and you can see all the strike marks on this wall here could well have been caused by throwing grenades and by small arms fire from Otway's assaulting forces as they attack this position. Of course, it could, it could just be caused by naval gunfire, bombing, shrapnel. It's still really interesting. Once they conducted the assault and they evacuated from the area, they ran down this road to the next rendezvous location, which is the Calvary Cross located right here. And it's on these steps that Colonel Otway took stock of what had just happened and tried to assess his losses. Right, so once they completed the assault, they ran down this road, which is just behind the camera, and they got to this Calvary Cross, which was the final RV location. Colonel Otway sat on those steps, he took off his helmet and he held his head 
in his hands. Out of the 150 men who assaulted the Merville gun battery, only 75 made it back to this location. We'd gone in with 150, we came out with 75 on our feet only. I really hope you enjoyed this video. This is only the second video in the Normandy series, so please subscribe and follow the channel to support us. Now, a couple of people have asked about the Brenslinger top I'm wearing in some of these videos, and they've asked where they can get their hands on it. Reaper17 is the store that I use, so visit their website, which you can find in the description, to get your hands on this top and others just like it. I don't really promote brands on this channel, but I make an exception for this brand. They are veteran owned and veteran operated. All the links you need are in the description below.